<laughs> Can't get my mic pack on my belt. I was making sure it was on. That was the good part. I couldn't get back on my belt. Now, here we are. Good morning. Good to be here with you all. Weather has changed, if you didn't realize that. Isaac, you didn't realize that? So one person with shorts on today, well, maybe he will uh, realize the weather has changed eventually and dr drag out the jeans and the quilted flannel and all that good stuff. So we got a whole bunch of things that are coming up. Um, they're listed on the back of the bulletin. I think, you know, there's a, a youth uh, and family event today. Um, there's coming up on Thanksgiving Eve, we have worship service and a, uh, and a social time after the service with pie. So that's really fun on 7 p.m. On, on Wednesday, November 24th, a couple weeks. Um, the next day, there's a community Thanksgiving meal hosted by Tammy and Harry Armstrong. Uh, they're cooking and uh, hosting here at noon. Um, Amy got uh, the DSOC Christmas tree information. Um, the little trees with the DSOC angels are right by the office, by the history room area there. Um, the Advent services are coming up starting the end of November on November 30th, Wednesday evenings. There'll be four weeks of Advent services in the middle of the week. So those are coming up. Um, also, we haven't done, well, we did do this last year, but I think it was a limited amount, or maybe we didn't do this last year. When did we last do this, uh, Renee? The Feed My Starving Children pack, was that last year? It was not last year. was not last year, so it's been two years yes. without it. Oh, yes, so definitely. First time in two years, and we have the funds already designated so we can have 50 Badger Lutheran Church members join in on these teams to pack these meals. And uh, the protein and the, and the soy all goes in there together, and the dehydrated vegetables and the rice, of course rice is a big part of it, and the vitamins, all those things go in together into a little plastic pack, um, supposed to feed about six people for one meal. And that's all packed together, and then lots of those plastic packs go in one boxes, and the boxes get loaded into pallets, and the pallets go on big trailers and go all the way around the world, but also some are kept here locally. So we're just hoping for 50 Bath Year Lutheran people to sign up. That's a lot of us. We don't have much more than 50 here today. So we need to get a lot of us involved and signed up for that. All good things. A lot of good things here on the back of the bulletin to take more detailed look at than I'm sharing with you right now. But uh, I'm just excited for good things coming up here in Badger. Share that excitement with you. I hope you feel excited about it as well. Is there anybody else that's got an announcement this morning? Amy, you've got an announcement? Can we turn on the red mic here for them to use? Here we go, all right. Pass the mic around as needed. Good job, everybody. Yes, I like to have my friends with me. Um, on behalf of the Norwegian Supper Committee, we would like to thank everyone for helping another successful event. And I actually want to read a thank you that we received here at the church, because I thought it was pretty cool. So it says, to the clergy, kitchen help, and children waiters. I would like to express my gratitude for all the dedication and work that it takes to put on a super Norwegian supper that was just awesome. I have attended 80 of these suppers, starting at Audison until they quit, and then Bode until they quit, and now Badger. The only times I missed was the year of COVID 2020. But I hope you can continue with the good help that we all remarked how well it was run and well organized. The value of the supper is non-consigning, and we all hope you continue in the future. Thanks again. And it was signed Bruce, Letta, Pete, Lynn, Randy, and Bonnie from Humboldt and Audison. It's been a family tradition. P.S. The people we sat by drove 125 miles one way to be there. They come from far and wide. See you next year. So we thought that was pretty neat. Um, it takes a village, and so we want to thank everyone for helping all of the prep, the 
I can't say enough to the young folks, and I have thank yous for all of you, the youth that helped. Can't say enough how many comments we get from the attendees of how cool that is that our youth not only steps up and helps with the prep of the LEFSA and all those types of things, but then setting up the dining room and then serving. We get comment after comment after comment how cool that is. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Just one quick thing, and I, it kind of dovetails off what, that beautiful note. The neatest thing is not just the young people, it's the whole spectrum of the age group that work here. We have people here, and this, just look around. You know, this is a congregation that pulled together, did a fantastic job, young and old, just knocking it out of the park, nonstop. They don't have to be told what to do. They see something that needs to be done, they grab it or grab someone who can help them do it. Just an incredible evening. Thanks to all of you again from the bottom of our hearts. Just a great, great representation of this fine congregation. It's a heritage dinner. That's the first number one piece of it. And that's kind of why you see the feedback and why these people are wanting to drive 120 plus miles to be here. They really enjoy their heritage. It's something that we should be proud of and continue to work hard. And we will certainly do that from our end. Thanks again very much, everyone. Appreciate it. I'll get it. All right, you, I think you got it. Yep. All right. So yeah, I think that uh, note was from a fellow in the Humboldt area named Bruce Watnam. Some, some of you might know who he is, Bruce Watnam. So, pretty neat. And I know I had verbally many of the same kind of compliments because I was up in the entryway and I was up there while people were coming in and up there when people were leaving and they were, they were giving me lots of those same kinds of comments. They really, really enjoy it. And uh, it's hard work for us. And uh, we're probably at about the limit to how many we can feed. Um, but we're really glad to host it and uh, so thankful that we can pull together. Big team, big team. All right, so I do invite you to stand if you're able. We'll start the service together. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And an important piece of this is greet each other in God's peace.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, around us we see the great evidence of your mighty power and your great creative work in this world that we live in, in this universe that we can observe from great distances with all the technologies that we have today and we see how wonderfully designed you have done and how, how you've made this great world to work for us and for our um, experience to share together here. We remember not only your creativeness, Lord, but your gracious love and your compassion and how you provide so much, how you're faithful each and every day to us and help us, O oh Lord Jesus, to be faithful to you. We pray this day for all gathered here, for those that are listening from far away, and we ask, Lord, that you be with each one of us and that you work in us and especially in the hearing of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go ahead and be seated. It is a children's message time, and I believe we have some kids that are here. Oh, we do. We have several that are here. All right. Hmm. Let me just kind of sit right here in the middle. Can I? All right. Awesome. So, is your brother coming? All right. Emmett's coming. Come on, Emmett. Come over here, buddy. Come over here. Yeah. Yeah, come over here. Right over here. Can I sit on my knee? There we go. Yes. Can you see where mom and dad are? They're up there. All right. Yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, so I have a serious message to talk about. Elmer, are you listening to? Yeah. Do you ever hear about bad things that happen? Do you ever hear about bad things? Some things that are sad? Yeah? Do you ever feel a little bit scared about something sometimes? Does that happen? Do you get scared about things? And not when sisters tease you, though, right? Uh, do you ever feel a little scared about some things? Yeah? Sometimes, even big people, we, we get scared about some things. Did you know that? We do. We get scared about some things. And when we do, I try to remember a line from the Lord's Prayer. This is the line I remember that we pray together. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Have you heard that line before? Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Who is thine? That's an old style word, isn't it? It actually means the same as yours. And who's the your we're referring to? God. God. Yeah, Jesus. So yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. The kingdom. <coughs> that means like the whole universe is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So we can remember that. Jesus wins in the end. And Jesus has a lot of love for us. So we get to be on his side of things, right? So let's have a prayer together. Can we pray? Let's have a prayer together. There you go. Let's fold our hands. Oh, you're going to sit right next to us? All right, let's fold our hands. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me, will you? Jesus, when we get scared, help us to remember that the kingdom and the power, that the kingdom... And the glory are yours. And the glory are yours. Amen. Amen. All right. There you go, bud. Can you follow Elmer? Yep, go right up there where Elmer was. A little further. A little further. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that would be an interesting experience, wouldn't it? We could do it. Good morning. Uh, before I get going with the readings, while we were sharing the piece, a couple people asked if I had a sign up sheet. And what do you know I do for Feed My Starving Children? Um, so the blue sheet is for the times of noon to two. 
there's 25 spots, so we can fill this sheet. I just need you to put your name, um, and if you're bringing a child, that's fine. Um, there are, I don't want to say rules, but kind of rules. Um, any, so kids ages five and up are, are welcome to come. Um, they just need a parent, some supervision, you know, based on the age of the child. So um, kindergarten through, th through second grade, there's, it's got to be a one-to-one. -one. So one, one student, one adult. Um, and then from third to six, it's three students to one adult. And then seventh through 12, you know, five, five to one. So this is totally a family event. So if you want to sign up, please sign up everybody in your family if, if, if you're going to do that. And then I did reserve 21 spots from 2.30 to 4.30. That's all they had available. Um, I think more is going to come available. So if you if you want to go, you can still still write it down. I, I doubt they're going to turn any volunteers away. So these will be on the back. If you have any questions, holler holler at me. If you need a ride, carpooling is available. Um, or, and if you have any questions, just let us know because it's a really fun event. So okay, back to why I'm supposed to be here. Okay, the first reading of the day is from Malachi. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and the evildoer will, will be stumbled. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of the righteous will rise with healing in its rays and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then, then you will trample on the wicked, and they will be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, and the, de the de decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all of Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children, and the hearts of, the, of their children to the parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. The psalm we will read responsively, it's Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. The second reading comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from ev every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teachings you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were there with you, we gave you this rule, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. We hear that, you, we hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy, they are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge 
in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. Just as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of, what, uh, of doing what is good. Here ends the reading. reading today is in Luke chapter 21, beginning in verse 5. Some of Jesus' disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, When will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, Watch out, that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. And then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events, and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so... You will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. They will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. But... Not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm, and you will win life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out. Let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful. It will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go ahead, be seated. So this past week we had elections in the USA, and they're over. Senators, representatives, both nationally and in our state, our governor, state officers, local elections in our county, 
they're all over. A few places ballots are still being counted, but I think almost all these elections have been decided. What have we been going through for these last bunch of months, right? Flooded our senses with signs up on street corners and people's lots, news articles, letters to the editor, and of course the infamous political ads on television that cost thousands and thousands of dollars, well, some of them even millions of dollars. I'm breathing a sigh of relief that it's over. I'm breathing a sigh of relief that the political ads are over, right? How are you feeling, though? What are your emotions? Are you excited or frightened? Concerned? Wondering if is, is there any hope in this political process? I guess, I hope. You cast your vote. An interesting note that in God's word, in the Bible, it says this about governments, that governments are ordained by God. So I guess we have to see what God wants to happen through these people that have been elected. And of course, there are a lot of other events going on in our country and around the world. And those kinds of events that are happening can leave us quite frightened and discouraged, especially if we forget our Christian faith. It can be especially discouraging. So our goal, I tell you, in these next couple sentences, just a summary of what this message is going to be. So I'm going to tell you what the summary is right from the beginning, and that is this. To remember our faith in Jesus Christ and be people that trust our gracious and almighty God that will bring us through all that is happening and will happen and bring us safely home to heaven. Notice what I didn't say. God's going to help us to skip all the bad stuff. I didn't say that. But God's going to bring us through it and safely home to heaven. So, no fear is needed. <laughs> Easy to say, right? When we read about Jesus' life in Luke's gospel, and then we read these verses in Luke 21, these terrible events are recited. Sounds strange and scary and weird. Jesus is with his disciples in front of this huge temple, which is a, recreated before you there, this Temple Mount area raised up on the east side of the city of Jerusalem. And then in the center of the Temple Mount is the, the taller structure that is the temple. And they're looking at this wonderful architecture, this great accomplishment by Herod the Great building this temple, and Jesus says it will be completely destroyed. And there's going to be a slaughter of all the people of Jerusalem. And you know what happened? About 36 years later, after Jesus' time, the temple was destroyed, and the people of Jerusalem were slaughtered in 70 AD. And it's so horrible that they say the blood ran ankle deep in some places. Verse 6 says, the time will come when not a stone will be left on another. Verse 20 in our reading today says, when you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know the desolation is near. And if that wasn't bad enough, nine years later, Mount Vesuvius in Italy erupted, destroying cities and villages in Italy, close to Rome even, all over Italy, experiences um, of desolation and even in the Mediterranean world and all those areas that we would call familiar countries today like um, Greece uh, and some of the Turkey and Syria and Israel and North Africa and Egypt all those were experiencing earthquakes and destruction and cloudy cloudy skies from all the ash and even today at least still has earthquakes that rumble and destroy and the slaughter in jerusalem was bad 2000 years ago but even recently there have been such horrible things happening the ukrainian war of course the 400,000 syrians killed by bombs during the syrian 
civil war from 2012 to 2019. And refugees from those wars and others escaping destructive areas and trying to go for safety in Europe. And then in South America, things are really bad. And a lot of refugees pouring across our southern border of the U.S. trying to flee poverty and cruelty. Things that most of us have never experienced. Six million refugees escaping from one country of Venezuela because of the cruelty and poverty caused by that regime there. Most of those millions of refugees from Venezuela have gone to Colombia and Peru and Ecuador, but a few of them have made their way across many countries, including Mexico, to get to the U.S. borders. We've seen news reports of floods and devastations of hurricanes in the southern part of the United States and the east. We've had droughts in our area of the country and further west threatening our food supply. We've had devastating insect invasions in some areas, like citrus groves in Florida. We have heard reports about rogue nations developing weapons and atomic bombs and dirty bombs. And we hear things like terrorist activities happening and cyber attacks, and we wonder, when is that going to happen? Will it bring our nation to its knees? All at the same time, the rich seem to be getting richer, and even the middle class are having a hard time just maintaining being middle class. And then we have these verses in today's scripture. Wow. Jesus says, when you hear of wars and uprisings, don't be frightened. No fear is needed. <laughs> it's easy to say, right? It is hard. Jesus, why shouldn't we be frightened? Jesus, help us. We feel so helpless. We can't even circle our wagons. We think about all these horrible things that could happen and have happened and are happening. And they're in opposition to what we think and believe. And it's like a 10,000 bison are stampeding toward us. And then every year it seems to be that there are fewer and fewer people that are Christians that confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that some countries in this world that were once maybe majority Christian are now agnostic and unbelievers and atheistic and, and other immigrants coming in that are Muslim are taking over in terms of the majority. Interestingly, though, in a few countries of this world, there are more Christians now in some countries in Africa than number of Christians here in the United States. And suddenly, instead of the U.S. churches sending missionaries to Africa, African churches are sending missionaries to the United States. But all of that might make us a little fearful, might make us feel a little frightened when we look around the rooms and we see a shrinking number of people here with us and we see that this population is aging and that people in general are less certain about Christian beliefs. And there's the opposition, a person saying, don't believe in that stuff anymore. That's just fables and myths. And then there are some Christian preachers that don't seem to be sticking to what's in the Bible, and they're just talking about prosperity and believe in God and you're going to get rich. And all of this is happening around us. And I guess the only possible answer is that what Jesus said would happen is happening. But the end isn't in sight yet. He said he would tell us what to say when we face oppositions. When we're face to face with those that threaten us spiritually, Jesus told us he would give us words to say. And then he tells us not a hair in our head will be touched. But what about those people that have no hair left on their heads? Why trust Jesus? today. Why trust him in the midst of all of this that's happening? What are the alternatives? We can't go anywhere when we wouldn't face some of the threats that are today. Where can we hide? We can't build enough prepper bunkers to avoid these events. Most of us don't have the financial resources to bribe our way out of these dangers. So what do we do? What's the alternative? 
Do we just eat, drink, and have fun? Live it up because the end's surely near? Lots of people think sexual promiscuity is a great answer. A lot of people think consuming a lot of alcohol is a great answer. Meanwhile, people are suffering. And minimum wage earners are under the poverty line. And over 50% of students in our public schools are from homes that are in poverty. Why trust Jesus today? Why believe that we don't need to be fearful and frightened when all that is happening is happening and much more will happen in the future? It's because. It's because of this, isn't it? It's because our Bible, our greatest resource, the authority of God's word, which shares with us and tells us to trust Jesus, to believe as Jesus in the one, that he is the one, that Jesus is the one that makes life possible, but gives life meaning, right? Jesus is the one that gives life true meaning. We all, every one of us, I think, and say we've had these moments of confusion, these moments of questioning, these moments of wondering. And we ourselves are very imperfect people, making many mistakes, often trusting ourselves more than trusting the Lord Jesus, having sometimes of false hopes and false dreams, and thinking at the same time, even just, Lord, just let us survive. Let us get through life. Let us be with our families and our friends. Let us have good moments. We want to have life. And Jesus is the one that is sharing this information with us. And he is the one that faced opposition coming to him from all kinds of directions. And sometimes his family even wasn't his greatest resource, but actually his opposition telling him, boy, you would need a little time to rest, Lord Jesus. You need a little time to rest, Jesus. You seem to be a little mixed up. And his closest friends, his disciples, couldn't really get it straight about who he was. They were always looking for him to be like the next and greatest and best ruler of Israel and to give each one of those disciples a place of power and authority. And the Jewish leaders that should have been on the same side of Jesus, they had the same word of God that Jesus had. They thought he was a danger everything they stood for and believed in. And eventually, the Jewish leaders pushed to have Jesus executed because they thought he was pretending to be someone they thought he wasn't when he actually was. They thought he was pretending to be the Messiah, but Jesus was actually the Messiah. He is the promised Savior. He was the promised Savior. And the disciples, they wanted to know, when is all this going to happen? And Jesus speaks to them. Our gospel reading today, verses 8 through 11, just these four verses, it says, Watch out that you're not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and saying the time is near, Do not follow them, Jesus says. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must must happen first, but the end will not come right away. And he says to them, nations will rise up against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. There's going to be great earthquakes and famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Jesus was trying to prepare those disciples and us today for events that will happen before the end comes and he returns. Whew! He was trying to help us be prepared for things we can not hardly fathom. We can't even wrap our mind around what some of that means. And while we wait for the worst of things to happen, it seems, we will have opportunity to be witnesses. We will have opportunity to tell others how much the Lord Jesus means to us and what he has done for us and how he is our savior. Even today we see terrors 
and signs that Jesus foretold. Worldly destruction and devastation. And we know that God is present in this world even when we feel that he is absent. And we can remain full of faith in Jesus, trusting Jesus, and be his ambassadors. We can. We really can. Especially when so many things around us are going wrong. Because God gives to us the gift of his Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit comes upon his believers who especially pray and say, Oh Lord, Holy Spirit, work in me, work through me, that we can be his witnesses, providing testimony to others, having some wisdom in times of difficulty and trial and persecution, bearing witness for what Jesus has done for us and is doing every day in our lives until he returns, being ambassadors to people that we feel are in opposition to us, even people in our own families. We know because it says so in the Lord's book that families will be in opposition to each other. Yet God has promised he will be present in the life of every believer even if we don't see him. The blessings of Jesus from the cross to our lives have been given to us each personally in our baptisms. And we have been reconciled to God. And he is always with us. And we can say with the psalmist, this little piece that's been on every slide today, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And later on in that same psalm, it says, The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. When each one of us faces difficult days, difficult days in our own personal journey, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you even when you feel in your emotions and feelings like he isn't. Because our emotions and feelings can be all over the place. We need to keep going back to God's word which tells us the truth and the promise. The Lord is with you. And your help comes from the Lord. When God seems more absent than present, Please realize, the Lord is with you. You are not alone. And the challenge for us is the same as it was for the earliest days of the church and throughout all of history. And in those moments when we're tempted to have despair and to be frightened, don't cling to your feelings. Don't hold on tight to despair. Don't hold on to any of those things. But instead... Embrace the promises of God. God's word and God's Holy Spirit never fail. They don't fail. It's going to sustain us. It's going to keep us through our lives and even unto our death. No fear is needed. But we still will have some. But it's not needed. You don't have to have fear, although you might have some. But instead, stand firm in Jesus and say again, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And to that all God's people can say, amen. I do invite you to stand.
my sisters and brothers in Christ. We have this opportunity to now share words of faith together, words that we can believe. In fact, three times we say, I believe in this creed. So let us read it and listen to our own words as they preach to us, that we might hold on to our faith every day and share some with others. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us all come near to God and confess our sin and ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. The Lord is merciful and will keep his promise to forgive our sins. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, I confess my sins, known and unknown, and my decisions to not follow where you are leading me. I believe that without your mercy I am lost. Please wash away all my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. Hear the good news. Jesus forgives you. God sent Jesus to us, and his plan was fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross for all our sins and then conquered death, giving those who believe in him everlasting life. Jesus continues to call the unbelieving to turn to him and repent and believe while there's still time. To that, all God's people can say, amen. amen. Go ahead and be seated. We'll collect the offering. <coughs> for the prayers, if you're able. <laughs> Let us pray. Lift our hearts, our voice to the Lord God. Let me pray for each one of us. Oh, Lord God, we ask that you would speak to us, for we, your servants, want to be listening. And help us to take time and effort to listen to you from your word, let us read from your Bible just verses each day and let us respond to you in obedience and faithful living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, keep giving us the gift of faith, a steady faith, and that we have hope in you, Lord Jesus, in difficult times, and that we understand your sincere love for each one of us and for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Oh Lord Jesus, you have commanded us to be ones that make disciples. And that's a tall order. Help us, Lord Jesus, though, to be part of that process. Give us boldness to share the, the word of God that we have. Put your saving gospel in our hearts and on our lips. Help us to have strength that we get from your word and not be shy about the good news that we have. Help us to do your will while there's still time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are suffering in this world from various disasters and wars, for those who are persecuted and falsely accused and imprisoned and tortured for confessing your name, Jesus, as their Savior, as our Savior. Lord, be with those Keep them strong. Help us to be aware of our bond to them through you. Grant them an inner relief from suffering. And help us, Lord, know Jesus, how to pray for them and how to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray for healing for those that need physical healings, for those who also struggle with depression and loneliness, we pray for those whose spirit needs an uplift. And we take a few moments of silence now to mention their names to you from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks that you continue to teach us how you would have us believe and what you would have us to do in serving others every day. Help us to keep your word in our hearts. Help us to be strengthened in faith. Help us to be transformed by your holiness that works into our lives. And help us always to know your comfort in this life and even unto our death. And to that, all God's people can say, Amen. I invite us to pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass, who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God's peace and serve the Lord.